Hello, everybody. My name is Neil Hanch. I'm the CEO of Silicon Foundry. Thank you again for uh, listening in to my presentation and to the team from the International Trade Council, ITC, uh, and hosting the Startup Summit uh, here in January 2021. Um, what we'll be talking about today are the keys to success in startup and corporate partnership and really trying to touch upon, uh, from our experience, the practices and pitfalls of startups working with corporates. So I will go ahead and, and uh, you're seeing my offices. I'm sitting here in San Francisco in normal times. I'd be in that building uh, behind me and um, uh, look forward to hopefully meeting uh, many of you listeners in person uh, someday, either here in Silicon Valley or wherever you may be based. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and over the course of the next 20 or so minutes, walk through a handful of slides uh, to touch upon this topic. So I will move myself down and bring to the forefront um, a series of slides that we put together for this presentation. There we go. So I mentioned today, uh, we will be talking about the interplay between corporates and startups and all the different ways that they can work together. Uh, just briefly uh, on my background um, to give you a sense of why this might be a topic that I'm either qualified to talk about or this near and dear, given the nature of, of my day-to-day -day work. Um, Silicon Foundry, uh, we sit at the center between working with corporates and startups. And for myself, all of my career has been largely leading up to, uh, to that offering. Uh, I've worked at startups. Uh, I've worked as an investment banker, advising technology companies and traditional companies. Um, have worked in corporate development, which is really strategy, uh, at Macromedia, which is today Adobe as well as a partner at a venture firm. And that's really the ecosystem that we operate between large corporations, startups, and the venture capitalists that back them. Just for a moment, so you understand what Silicon Foundry is, uh, we're a membership-based innovation advisory platform. We work for large corporations, but our real asset are relationships with founders and entrepreneurs uh, like yourselves. We work with these companies, these large corporates who are looking to navigate the startup ecosystem to our under, and globally, trying to understand uh, what's happening and which of these emerging companies should be on their radar screen because they should either be engaging them uh, as customers or partners or for strategic investment opportunities or in some cases for acquisitions. So we sit at the center of the ecosystem uh, and in addition to corporations, these are the large big incumbents, we'll call them the Fortune 1000 and startups, there may also be the venture investors that are behind the startups, even governments, especially uh, economic development organizations, and researchers and academics at institutions who are looking to commercialize the intellectual property that they're building. When we look at corporations, and this will be important for the topic at hand here today, um, it's really a matter of plugging into uh, their existing efforts and to create efficiencies and really support the success of these efforts. And when we look at the different tools that many corporations, either one or more, all of these things that they employ when it comes to engaging and interfacing and discovering and interacting and, and working with startups, often it may be that they have accelerator or incubator programs or studios, they have innovation labs. They have very active corporate development or business development teams, and we'll get into what that means. Um, more so than ever before, they have corporate venture capital arms uh, where they are making strategic investments in companies, or in some cases, the corporates are investing in VCs who in turn are backing the companies. The types of corporates that we work with today, just to give you a sense of spectrum, they're all over the world. They're in everything from oil and gas to financial services to retail to telecommunications, aviation, uh, which I think is indicative, as you'll hear, um, is corporates looking to work with startups is not unique to any one industry, sector, or geography of the world. And for our, my business today, you know, we have about 25 corporates that we work very deep, deeply with and another 200 or 300 that we've talked to in the past year or two. So we, we, much of what we see, we have the pattern recognition of this mutual interest and excitement and activity and success stories of large companies working with smaller companies. So let's dive right in. Um, I think the first question uh, uh, that could be had is, well, what type of corporations um, are looking for partnerships? And we'll use the term partnerships broadly here today. Um, and as I just mentioned, 
um, what we see is uh, all different types. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a sign of uh, evolution, but recognizing you know, every market, every sector, every industry is, not, is left, uh, none are left uh, uh, untouched by uh, disruption and the digital transformation that's happening right now. And these large corporations, they have big resources, they have big brands, they have uh, you know, everything that, that incumbent status affords them. Uh, but they also have the challenge of an entrenched way of doing things. Uh, and um, they, as we'll get into, they can move slowly, uh, they have politics, um, uh, but they have, uh, we believe, more so than ever before, uh, a greater need, desire, uh, support at the senior most levels, including in the board meeting, to move faster in changing and to be able to tap external innovation, which so often is where startups come in. Uh, and they have pressures. Um, and I think if we look at the last bullet point here to the left, um, you know, the most aggressive uh, big co's, as I'll keep calling them, um, uh, in this context are probably the ones who their industries are fundamentally seeing the most dis disruption, seeing the fastest um, uh, speed of uh, necessitated change. So you, it wouldn't surprise you, things like media and publishing, uh, the automotive world. You know, maybe 15 years ago, you didn't see venture capitalists making too many investments that touched automotive. And now automotive, uh, aerospace, aviation, and all things mobility uh, is a big area, uh, uh, as we know, uh, of startups coming on the scene and having a big impact on these traditional industries. Financial institutions, financial services, and retail. Um, certainly no retailer, uh, at least in North America, has been unaffected by the rise of Amazon. And then on the right, as we talked about, how might a corporate and a, and a founder, entrepreneurs like yourselves, uh, interact? Well, maybe through a corporate accelerator or incubator program, these innovation or digital labs, the partnership units. So when we use the term business development, that's where these larger companies are looking for startups where they may partner with them. They may not only use their products in their own business, but they may be a channel for resale. Um, and that's in distinct from corporate development, uh, which may represent the acquisition units. So um, where we've seen large corporations uh, with very aggressive uh, um, activities where they're buying startups for the technology, for the platform, for the service, and for the team and talent as much as anything in so many cases. The last piece which we'll touch upon is corporate venture capital. And this is corporations making minority strategic investments in startups as, a, as an overall part of their capabilities. Um, and we'll definitely dive in on that. So why do corporates uh, work with startups? Well, piloting is certainly one, one way, especially where the corporate, uh, uh, the interest there is that they may be a customer. They may be using the solution from the startup in their retail bank and their telecommunications network out in their oil gas rig, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, Corporates also see new lines of business, uh, either through partnership uh, or in, and again, in acquiring startups. Um, so many of these large, you know, successful companies that in some cases have been out for decades, in other cases for centuries, um, they're looking to drive and kind of accelerate a cultural shift to be more nimble, uh, to be more agile in almost every way of that term that you can think of. Um, the, and the last piece here is to gain access to top talent. Um, and that is, so often many of the acquisitions you see, it's because they want that digitally native talent. Uh, on the right-hand side, you have a, a look at why do startups, uh, why is working with corporates uh, as a startup uh, a powerful potential proposition? And not surprisingly, number one here, and this was a, a, a survey by BCG, Boston Consulting Group, was you know, the startup views that corporate as a potential customer. It's a sales opportunity. Um, the second piece is, is market access. So that corporate may be a partner who will help uh, give you market access, maybe put you on their sales list or, or push you through their distribution channels. The third, and I won't walk through all of these, but just the last two here that I will hit upon is reputation of reference. We all know the power of a blue chip logo from a household brand name that's on uh, your website as a startup or in your pitch deck if you're fundraising. Which leads to this, this last point here, fund, funding at the 30%, you know, corporates are more active than ever before in making investments in startups that they think they may want to work with. And there's a lot of pros and cons to that, which we'll get to in a moment. 
So uh, despite all of this interest and all of these reasons uh, why these collaborations and these partnerships should be happening, um, and as we see on the left, you know, three quarters of, uh, of startups and the leadership of startups believe it is important, but only about a third are completely satisfied. You know, those who are working with corporates today um, and, uh, and that is not a, a, a feedback unique to one side of this coin. Uh, you know, half of corporates uh, also aren't uh, entirely satisfied with the outcome and their experience in working uh, with startups. Um, and if we, if we look at some of the reasons why, um, part of it is it's, you know, when the startup was working with the corporate, uh, they can find the decision making is slow. Um, and uh, it may be that the expectations that were set from the onset weren't set appropriately. And so you have a mismatch, you know, definition of what's success uh, in this work. Um, so speed, decision making, and also clarity of decision making uh, within the corporation. You know, as a startup, are you working with the right person? Do they have the um, uh, decision making power? Can they pull the trigger, uh, so to speak? Um, and so these are the types of things you want to qualify up front as an entrepreneur approaching uh, or working with the corporate. And the last uh, on this slide is just the cultural and technological differences. So, so there may be technical differences that um, so you want to assess those out early on uh, that may make it a challenge in moving forward, even if there's a successful initial engagement. And then just cultural, uh, which, you know, in every sense of that term um, and um, uh, where there may just be a cultural mismatch between the two organizations. So uh, once again, let's bring back some optimism. Uh, and you know, despite this dissatisfaction that can happen, you know, uh, the, the reason to be optimistic in these corporate startup partnerships is you know, the corporates know in many cases, not all, but that they can really uh, drive radical innovation in working with startups, that it can help accelerate the speed of change. Um, and uh, I think the, the large incumbents uh, who in many cases, depending on the industry, they had have, they have established very strong barriers to entry. Uh, and I think we've all seen as digitization has taken over, a lot of those barriers to entry uh, have fallen away. Uh, and the speed and scale at which a new emerging company can challenge and not just nip at the heels, as the saying goes, of these large corporates, that universe is much larger uh, than ever before. And there's a, there's growing experience um, on both sides in these types of collaborations, and experience is important to things like setting expectations uh, up front, uh, and so that can help increase the probability of success for them. And last, and definitely not least, with that experience, but also in parallel to it, is just a willingness to cooperate, uh, a leaning into cooperating rather than avoiding it, or. Uh, the not invented here syndrome, which may be, you know, corporate uh, senior executives not interested in tapping external innovation, believing we can build it all in-house, uh, and much of that thinking has fallen away, particularly in the last few years. So uh, we did want to touch upon, and I'll go back to, uh, we'll end up talking about commercial relationships beyond strategic investment, but uh, as we, we mentioned, Corporate venture capital, so corporations making direct investments in startups, either they set up uh, units to do that very explicitly or do it opportunistically through their corporate development or business development teams off, uh, often. These are at all time high risk, highs right now. Uh, and, uh, and as you'll see on the right, um, they've only become you know, greater in terms of a percentage of all the venture capital rounds raised, how many have corporates participating uh, how many deals are they doing every year? Uh, these, this really is at the highest that it's ever been in so many ways. And why do the corporations do this? Um, the main reason is it gives them one more tool to engage with startups, uh, not just partnering with them, but to actually own a piece of those startups. It gives them uh, in a bit of an unfair advantage it gives them a look into the company more deeply, uh, a voice around the table often uh, in that company's roadmap uh, or their decision making, um, and as well as you know, often a, a corporate may uh, the saying is a key maker. You know, if they're a customer to an emerging company, that that uh, increases the value of that emerging company. Uh, their customer generates revenues. Back to that, it's a blue chip seal of approval, and so uh, many corporations say. If we're going to help make this startup successful, we'd also like to enjoy 
and that value, or we'd like to um, uh, have the benefit uh, of capturing some of that value that they've helped create. So uh, getting to uh, the main gist here, which is how to effectively work with corporates. So if you're a founder, CEO, you're an executive at a startup, uh, and you know that working with corporates um, is, will be an important part of building the business, what are the pitfalls? What are the, the words of advice in doing so? Um, the first is, uh, and this is from the lens of the startup, uh, really understand the, in, the internal champion that you're working with. And I mentioned this earlier, but uh, understanding, uh, are they sufficiently se senior? Uh, can they articulate the value proposition? Like, are they a decision maker that if your initial conversations or your pilot, wherever the case may be, as you're getting to know one another, um, if that works well, you know, is there a, a, a bigger relationship to be had? And is there clarity on what that path looks like? Um, pilots. So depending on the nature of your business, a pilot, a proof of concept is the other term often uh, used. Uh, that is often, especially where the corporate uh, may be a user. So they're looking at you because they may want to use your solution in their business. You know, often a pilot will be the way that starts. And once again, it's an opportunity and recognize if it's a paid pilot or unpaid, because as we know, if something's paid, there's a deeper level of commitment. Um, but regardless of which it is, is really make sure you set the definition of success up front. If this pilot, if our product, if our service performs as we expect, what will be the next step? What will that lead to? Kind of mapping out the storyboard before you get started, before the movie starts uh, uh, from the onset. I think also to recognize, as we talked earlier, startups and corporates may move at different speeds. So recognize that as the startup is, what's the speed of movement you can expect from corporate if things go brilliantly, if they don't go as well as expected, and, and account for that uh, in your own planning. Uh, also understand, uh, as the startup, your ability to scale. You know, one thing that we see often is uh, the relationship may not uh, be successful because the startup, if the corporate uh, gives a green light, really wants to move forward, can you scale with the needs of the corporate? Um, and lastly, you're going to get a lot of feedback from the corporate, uh, but recognize that may be feedback from one company and what they need. And so you, as the uh, startup uh, leadership, uh, effectively the, you know, the product managers uh, for your solution, you've got to decide and not take that feedback 100% uh, unless you believe that the feedback you're getting from that one potential customer is rep representative of the feedback that you would expect to get from many or most. So you're making decisions not just on what that corporate needs, but what you think the market that you're going after needs. So, uh, and I'll, I'll uh, get close to ending here with uh, taking capital. So my comments, the last few slides have really been working with corporates, either as you, if you look at them, uh, fundamentally as a potential customer or a partner to your business. Um, and here we're talking about uh, those situations where the corporate may all be a also be a potential investor in your business. Um, and certainly the pros uh, of that, and if you have that level and depth of relationship, is that you get in incremental market insights from that corporate, right? They're a potential customer, but they're also, as we know, uh, they're giving you feedback they are giving you confirmation on what your minimum viable product should be if you're in that stage. They, as we've talked about, can open pathways to commercial deals or distribution or direct sales. Um, and, uh, and if you're a, a company who also may have institutional VCs, venture capital that you're going after or already have, um, this is venture capital not associated with a corporate, then they often can be a nice balance. But the cons, uh, you start working with a corporate because you believe that there's a strategic element that's going to bear fruit out of it. But sometimes corporates can invest in your company, but the commercial deal never comes through uh, or their strategy changes. And now your startup is actually not relevant to their new strategy. And yet they will always be a part owner in your business, uh, or at least until there's an exit, uh, which can be suboptimal. Uh, sometimes corporate venture capitalists can have terms to their investment that are onerous, although we're seeing most of those go away. Um, and um, um, and you're again you're taking that investment because you because of the strategic element of it, uh, and so you you want to know if the person who would leave the investment do they also have the support of the let's say the business unit at the corporate which is the one you'd actually be selling to or working with that those sides uh, are aligned, um, so this can be the cons. But there's a lot of things you can do to mitigate those potential risks. 
Uh, and again, so much of it is, uh, is recognizing, um, are you talking to the right person? Are the expectations aligned? Is the definition of success aligned? Do you recognize the speed of movement at which they can operate? Will that fit with your strategy? Um, and, um, and so I won't go through all of these, uh, but certainly you'll be able to see the slides in the recording here. Um, and these can be some of the unique challenges of working with corporate venture capital uh, investors as opposed to private institutional investors. Uh, so these are some of the nuances, but ultimately it can be very powerful having a corporate as an investor in your business, not just being a customer or partner, but you gotta choose right and make sure that incentives and expectations are aligned. So with all of this to be said, how do you work with corporates? Um, how do you meet them? How do you start to engage with them? And I think this is a great example today. It's especially in the real world, but we're all digital at the moment, but it's at events. Uh, it's really crafting as the startup leadership, crafting target lists of here are the corporates we believe ideally are the ones we want to work with. So you identify them, you figure out how to get to them most directly. You know, a, a cold email may work, but um, what relationships do you have? You know, first of all, identifying who at that corporate is in the right position that you believe would be the right one to hear your story uh, and that you'd be approaching. Um, having the target list, figuring out the best, warmest uh, path to get to them, and, um, and then putting yourself in their shoes, given their role, what are their needs to work with you? What might be the incentives that they have given their role, what they're trying to accomplish, and as they're progressing in their own organizations, what issues uh, might they have? Might they have? Um, and so really it's, it's the classic thinking about your landscape, which companies you want to approach, who's the right person at those companies, what's the best, most qualified way to get in front of them and to have a conversation, and then recognizing what's, what's their mindset, what are their drivers, what do they need to accomplish in their job and role, and how might working with your startup uh, help them do that. So with that, thank you again everybody for your time. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, and thank you again also to the ITC uh, for this conference and for inviting myself and Silicon Foundry to be a speaker at it.